Many of us would like to imagine that our dairy comes from happy cows. We would also like to think that dairy is as good for us as we've been told. Because it is as though we've been told a story by those that want us to participate in dairy farming culture. Storytelling and participatory culture plays a part in all of this. Well, after you're done imagining happy, frolicking, and content cows that release some sort of miracle fluid that will keep you from experiencing bone loss or some deficiency in protein, let me share some facts with you about how dairy gets from the cow to you and how your body doesn't necessarily need this product to begin with and what alternatives you can choose to get the same nutrients dairy is claimed to have. And hopefully you'll change your mind the next time you think about purchasing anything containing dairy and take into account the ordeals dairy farming brings to not only cows, but your body as well. Let's start with how milk that we don't really need is produced. So like any other lactating being, cows produce milk to feed their young. This is pretty normal, but something that's not normal about this in the dairy industry is how cows become pregnant in the first place. First, dairy cows are forcefully and artificially inseminated as soon as they are able to become pregnant, which would be within the first year of her life. She would then give birth to her calf after nine to 10 months of gestation. Just to have her calf taken away from her within days or hours of her giving birth. This seems unnecessary, but it's actually very much needed if we are going to be able to keep her milk for human consumption without having her young calf drinking it, it all to themselves. Now, the calves aren't taken away to some calf playpen. If they are male cows, it's very likely that they'll be sold off to the veal industry and to make them more valuable to this industry they are kept in tiny crates where they can barely move to keep their flesh tender and the female calves will most likely be made to face the same fate as their mother this is where the desire of the people come in and the process to making their milk ours continues while the cow's udders are gorging with milk, they are taken to a milking parlor where they are hooked up to milkers which constantly suck on the cow's teeth to harvest the milk until she runs dry. She is then removed from the parlor into her cramped, usually grassless and probably dirty living area until the next time she will be hooked onto the machine and milked again. Through this constant milking process, cows can develop a common infection found in dairy cows called mastitis. Mastitis is an infection that causes painful inflammation of the mammary glands and is the primary cause of death for dairy cows as once they develop this infection, which can actually go undetected. They are usually taken to be slaughtered because no one wants to milk a sick cow. It's only okay, I guess, to milk them till they're sick. But wait, how can this go undetected, you might ask? And couldn't that make the milk undrinkable if some of the infectious tissue release some of its bacteria into the milk? Well, most cows don't show symptoms of them having this infection, so milk is luckily and constantly tested and checked for somatic cells, white blood and skin cells, also known as pus, and only a small amount of those cells, about 100,000 per milliliter, are allowed to be present in the milk you all drink. Now that I've explained the process through how milk is harvested, 
let's move on to how your body doesn't even really need to consume such a product. It's wild to think that we drink the milk of another animal or drink milk produced by another being beyond our infancy. You don't keep drinking breast milk past a certain age regardless of its health benefits, do you? I doubt it. So why would you drink someone else's milk, even if it's a cow? Especially when its benefits aren't actually that great and can actually cause you some problems. Having a heavy dairy intake in your everyday diet can contribute to the development of things such as prostate cancer, lactose intolerance, cholesterol, ovarian cancer, weight gain, and bone loss, also known as osteoporosis. The dairy industry does not bring up these possible side effects when they're promoting their dairy products for your consumption and calcium and protein are maintained as being the primary benefits dairy is promoted to have to people in order to make you purchase dairy products. We aren't told that we don't need milk to get these benefits that ultimately do not outweigh the negatives from dairy consumption. And we are not told that by simply increasing one's consumption of things such as black-eyed peas, kale, sesame seeds, and fortified orange juice would be enough to replace cow's milk benefits. Besides, there's also so many abuse-free milk options you can choose from to replace your craving for dairy. There's such a thing as cashew, coconut, soy, and almond milk that can satisfy your dairy craving without you supporting any abuse, which is what you're ultimately doing when you continue to purchase dairy products. So next time you're grocery shopping or simply treating yourself out, think about the life behind your dairy product and how good it would be to not support the abuse it had to endure to get to you. Cows will be grateful and in the long run, your body will be too.